Okay, I think we're going to get started here. So hi, everyone. My name is Sophia Pascuzo. I am the Customer Marketing Associate here at RKL eSolutions. I want to thank everybody for joining today's webinar, The Rise of Operational Accounting. A few things before we get started. All mics are turned off, so please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen if you have any questions. We will try to answer all questions throughout or at the end of the presentation. Today, we have Casey Padgett, a consulting alliance. Uh, Okay, excuse me, a consulting alliances manager at Flowcast. Casey has a bachelor's in accounting and has spent her career working alongside partners to bring best in class accounting solutions to the office of the CFO. Outside of work, Casey loves to travel and see live music in the most unique venues across the country and is also a proud cat mom. And with that, I'll let you take it away, Casey. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sophia. And hi, everyone. Thank you for having me join today. Uh, first and foremost, I would just like to thank the RKL team for being such a great partner and in inviting Flowcast to be a part of this Summer of Automation series with so many other just incredible ISVs and partners alike. Um, a fun fact about our partnership, RKL was actually one of Flowcast's first partners ever. Um, we've been working together since 2018 and over the past four years, We've really built a fantastic partnership and have been able to work with dozens of clients together on their accounting workflow process improvement. And I think what's really made our partnership so exceptional is that we share a common ground in being made up of forward-looking accountants who understand how valuable cloud technology is for finance and accounting leaders. And that just goes to show with this incredible series uh, that they have hosted this summer. So thank you, RKL, for having us out. And thank you uh, to all the viewers today for taking an hour out of your time, uh, out of your day to join us. Time is obviously our most valuable resource, and it's certainly appreciated that you're dedicating your time to be with us today. I'll be leading us through how you can win the accounting game by increasing operational efficiencies across your accounting workflows. So let's dive into that. A little about me, as I will be your speaker today. Uh, my name is Casey Paget. I am a Consulting Alliance Manager at Flowcast, as Sophia mentioned. I've been with Flowcast since January of this year, so sitting at just about eight months uh, with the organization, but my main role here is to support our partners and their clients as they venture into accounting uh, and, excuse me, automating their month and close reconciliations and other accounting workflows. Prior to Flowcast, I spent about four years with Lease Query, which hopefully you all were able to attend their session as well. Uh, while at Lease Query, I was a subject matter expert in lease accounting, helping hundreds of clients prepare and transition to the new lease accounting standards. Over my career, I've had a really unique experience of working with leading accounting and financial software to really help automate some of the most tactical, mundane accounting processes. So across the entire record to report process, I've really seen firsthand just what automation can do to really help level up your accounting game. And aligning with today's theme, witnessing that rise of operational accounting over the past few years has created a really exciting journey for me personally, and I'm excited to share more about that during our presentation. To start with an overview of, of who or what is Flowcast, Flowcast is an accounting workflow automation solution centered around the financial close and the reconciliation management process. We act as a complement to your current ERP by extending task management and workflow capabilities to help you shorten your close, reduce your audit, and increase your ability to report accurate and timely financials. We were founded back in 2013. Our founders are former accountants and CPAs that just didn't feel like there was a great middle market tool out there to really help with the month and close. So the genesis of our product really focused around the close, but over time, it's expanded to capture account reconciliations, FP&A processes, financial reporting, SOX compliance, audit preparedness, and many other upstream or downstream activities that you're working on today to give you a place to organize all of those workflows. Flowcast is proud to offer automation that can really support you and your team across the record to report process. So without further ado, let's look at today's agenda. We've broken this out into uh, five main components and we'll kick it off by defining what accounting operations is. We'll talk about what the expectation of operational excellence looks like in this market, the changing game of accounting and finance, key criteria to actually achieving what operational excellence is, 
And then we'll wrap things up with uh, a quick view at just some of the Flowcast features and how we help automate to uh, help you achieve operational excellence. And at this time, before we jump into uh, our content, I would just echo Sophia and encourage you that as we go through, if you have any questions, any comments, anything you'd like to discuss on the uh, presentation today, please drop that into the Q&A. Uh, we'll keep a lookout on those and I'll try to answer along the way or we'll take some time at the end to dedicate to that as well. So a couple of slides back, I shared who Flowcast is and, and what our Genesis story is, but I'd like to go even deeper on that and talk about what our goal at Flowcast is. Our main goal and our mission is to forever elevate accounting. Over the past few years, we've seen some alarming statistics across the accounting industry. Many sources from Accounting Today, the AICPA, uh, have reported a decline in the interest of accounting as a profession. In fact, Accounting Today actually reported in 2020 that nearly 75% of AICPA members were eligible for retirement that year. Uh, and there was a 5% decline in the total number of graduates uh, majoring in accounting. And on top of that, even a 30% decline in the hiring of those graduates. So, so that brings us to our mission. We want to forever elevate accounting and do our part to ensure that we can switch those numbers around and ensure that the profession is stronger than ever. Now, in order to do this, we need to focus on three main things. First, we need to usher in a new era of accounting with a new generation of professionals who enthusiastically choose accounting. We need to really rewrite the playbook on accounting and what an accountant does day to day. So getting out of that mundane everyday uh, task and automating that is a huge step in the right direction. Second, this era will be defined by accountants being the catalyst of change within the organization and therefore able to bring greater strategic value. So again, rather than finding yourself in the weeds of manual repetitive work day in and day out, our goal is to enable you as the accountant to get uh, focused on initiatives that will drive strategic value for your business. And lastly here, accounting will be reborn as the operational heartbeat of the enterprise. When you're involved in strategy uh, around how the organization is going to succeed and better itself, you really move yourself into this position of being that operational heartbeat. And now we'll really drive this home over the next few slides, but I wanna just pose a question to you as you're sitting here listening. Today, if you think about how you're currently working with your, uh, your teams and your organizations, your leadership, your board members, how are you currently involved with the operational excellence of your organization? Now just sit on that, kind of think about it and digest it, and we'll dive into further how that role is going to shift for accountants over time. So as it relates to how you're working with your teams today, I'm gonna to use a classic sports analogy here. In the photo on the left, we've got the quarterback of a football team leaned in, ready to make a throw. One thing about the quarterback, they are considered the leader of the offense, they're responsible for communication with their teammates, directing the plays, and in game time, when it's actually time to call the plays and, and make movement, they're also considered the on-field coach. So how I wanna build out this analogy, let's focus in on one play in a game. Assume it's game time, the quarterback just called for a pass, and now in order to achieve this, and, and let's get some gains on the yard, the purpose is to achieve the pass. That is our goal for this play. And now as a spectator or a fan at home, you might be hoping for a touchdown, a massive gain on the play, but simply put, for this to be a success, we want to achieve a completed pass. Now for this to all work out, the quarterback needs to complete the pass with a receiver. And when it's game time, it's really all about how you prepared. Leading up to that moment, the team has practiced for hours on end to get their plays down. You have your, uh, running backs, your receivers who are practicing their routes. And to perfect the throw itself, the quarterback has spent years getting ready for this. And they want to be able to act intentionally in the game and complete the pass. But without that practice before and measuring the play and, and kind of critiquing and changing some different routes, you're not able to really make that perfect pass. You might luck out, you might complete it, but it's not repeatable. And that's what we want to get to as a repeatable process. And this can also be applied to the idea of operationalizing. 
to operationalize is to measure the abstract and track it to act with intention to improve. A key component of operationalizing is having the long-term goal of improving your processes and continuing to track against your outcomes. And this helps you improve not only your day-to-day, -day, um, but your workload and just much more across your team. So as we're moving into this presentation and talking more about the rise of operational accounting, just keep in the back of your mind, this is something that is a continuous process improvement. We'll be measuring, tracking, we'll be practicing all to get to a state uh, a state of peace with operation. So let's tie that back into how that's going to affect accountants. And first I wanna talk about a little history lesson on modern accounting. I think it's important to look at where we came from and just how accounting has evolved over time, because with this, we'll be able to see how accountants have really stepped up and moved into this role of operational uh, accounting, even without really realizing it. And there are a lot of key moments in history where we're gonna see that take off. So dating all the way back to 5,000 BC, this is where currency was initially created, thus foregoing the path for non-bartering transactions. Believe it or not, people were tired of carrying around buckets of wheat just to see what they could get for a sheep. So we're tired of bartering, we're over that, we move on, we create a currency that we can use and needs to be tracked. Now I'm gonna jump forward a massive gap in history. And in the mid to late 1400s, we saw principles come to life around accounting. This is when double entry bookkeeping was first invented. And you also have uh, ledgers and financial statement line items come into play in 1494. But in terms of an accountant's fiduciary responsibility, we go another 400 years before we really see a pivotal change. In 1841, modern accounting and audit is officially chartered by the Bankruptcy Act. And this is really seen as a turning point for the profession and history. There was a need for accountants to step up and be able to audit and really just confirm the transactions that were taking place, um, taking place in time there. A decade later, Queen Victoria charters the Institute of Public Accountants, really driving the acceleration of a true professional accountant. Towards the end of the 19th century, the CPA, CPA exam is created. And a fun fact about that, the first examination was actually given by the New York Board of Examiners on December 15th and 16th of 1896. And, and that day really changed the profession forever. Um, it certainly, it is advantageous to hold your CPA if you're going to sit in the seat of an accountant. Uh, most, uh, in fact, most places probably require that. So really a turning point for all of us uh, on the call today. And so moving right along, a lot really starts to happen in the 1900s. In the span of 10 years, the New York Stock Exchange crashes, the Great Depression strikes, the SEC is formally chartered in 1934, and the Financial Accounting Standards Board, or FASB, is then chartered by the AICPA. And we see all of that happen in just 10 short years. And within those 10 years, just on an individual level, people were experiencing turmoil from the stock market crash and the Great Depression. But for the profession of an accountant, there was seemingly a light at the end of the tunnel. With more structure around the practice, more responsibility, a need for a true practicing accountant was continuing to trend upward. Now there is a heavier focus on the profession itself. Now jumping into the 2000s, I know everyone on this call remembers the dot-com first and the Enron scandal, arguably the most massive accounting scandal to happen in our history. And just a little background there, by the use of accounting loopholes, special purpose entities, and some poor financial reporting, executives were able to hide billions, with a B, billions of dollars in debt from failed deals and projects. So if there wasn't already scrutiny around the profession, Enron really ensured there would be going forward. And I'd like to highlight here that this helped forge the need for ethical accountants as well, not just accounting practices, but an ethical look at what an accountant is. And as a consequence of the scandal, new regulations and legislation were enacted to expand the accuracy of financial reporting, uh, mostly for public companies, but we obviously see that trickle down into private companies as well. And now enter 
Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. This effectively increased penalties for altering or fabricating records and increased the accountability of auditing firms to remain unbiased and independent. And then a few short laters after that, we hit the Great Recession of 2008, which as we know, one of the worst financial crises in our history. Though mostly not attributed to an accounting scandal itself, uh, the way that it played out in the financial world certainly rocked uh, the profession as well. And for the most part, over the last 10 to 15 years, it's been pretty smooth sailing for the industry. And then 2020 happens. This is very recent. We're all still living through this. This is when the coronavirus pandemic really shook the globe. And you don't need me to sit here and tell you about the pitfalls that brought that COVID-19 brought along for the economy. Um, but what you might not realize is there was a little hidden silver lining that came as a result of the pandemic. From a technology standpoint, it propelled the need for automation forward. Over the past few years, we've seen the need to automate or just move to the cloud. Uh, but COVID really showcased the desperate need to be able to operate effectively from a remote working environment with your teams. And now this leads us to today. We're still dealing with the pandemic. Um, there's a lot of talk about another recession maybe coming uh, our way, but this really brings about the rise of the operational accountant. And that is our next movement for modern accounting. So I hope you enjoyed the brief history lesson. We won't touch on that anymore. I do not have a background in history, just accounting. So I will move into what we should be focusing on. Um, so let's talk about the expanding role in the office of the CFO. We've seen it continue to expand compared to what it has been historically. There's been a clear shift from the back office to the middle office. There's been an increase in roles and personnel who actually report up through the CFO. And a good example of this, when you think of uh, your standard accounting roles, think about the emerging standards that have come out. We have new personnel staffing around revenue accounting, lease accounting, and much more. So when you think of the standard role of an accountant, you're already adding more roles to the office of the CFO. Uh, and in addition to that, the CFO is facing major responsibility and accountability for operational performance. And this is that true indicator of that expansion and that shift from back to middle office. CFOs are no longer just looked at as the number crunchers. They're now holding accountability for long-term company performance, and that trickles all the way down the accounting team. While for some of us, this probably may seem like a no-brainer, it's significantly shifted in the past five years, and we, will, we expect that it will continue to do so. And all of this together puts even more responsibility on the shoulders of the controller and their teams. They're actually doing this tactical work day in and day out to report on the numbers and do so accurately and effectively and share that up to the office of the CFO. But with this expanding role, it's just going to be more of an opportunity for the controllers and their teams to step into this position of leadership. Now, before we move on, let's take a look at the report on the right-hand side of the screen. This was pulled from a McKinsey report showing the number of roles that actually report to the CFO and the percentage change from 2018 to 2021. Now, one thing to notice right off the bat, you don't see the traditional roles of accounting here. Your AP roles, AR, staff accountant, you don't see those here. Let's just assume those are going to stay with the office of the CFO. But what I do find interesting is how drastically of an increase there has been with procurement reporting to the CFO. In just four years time, there's been a 16% increase. With investor relations, a 14% increase. With M&A transactions, execution, and even digital roles, those have increased 10%. And with enterprise transformation reporting into the office of the CFO, this is a huge shift from what we are historically used to. Enterprise transformation in a nutshell is how are you going to transform the organization? And the fact that that's now rolling up to the CFO at an increase of an 8% over the past few years is just massive. You can see across the board that there's primarily been an increase in the number of these roles reporting to the CFO. So again, this is pushing on not just what the CFO um, 
has to be responsible for and the roles that they now have to converse with, but their knowledge is expanding as well. So as you sit today, if you're a controller, if you're an accounting manager, a staff accountant, and you have your eyes on the goal of being a CFO or moving into that seat, it's good to go ahead and start thinking about, well, how can I be more operational to prepare for this type of role and this type of responsibility? So what does that mean for controllers today? Well, we've noticed this generational move movement is happening right in front of us. Throughout the pandemic, controllers met the challenge head on to continue to navigate forward. Over the past few years, controllers have had to manage through more risk in the market, uncertainty across the market, and even within their own organizations. And taking all of this head on meant being able to quickly course correct when needed. And it's been a tough fight for controllers, but this generational shift is leading way to the rise of operational accounting. The environment that controllers have been operating in, uh, specifically the past few years, has been challenging to say the least. If you consider the environment that we're in, it's obvious controllers have been operating in this pressure cooker environment. It's forced us to become an expert at execution. Flowcast completed a survey uh, with Deloitte a couple years back, and in that survey, we asked controllers and their teams, what challenges were you facing in today's operating model? And over 70% of the respondents said that their time was being bogged down by non-strategic tasks, things such as manual reconciliations, filling out checklists, booking entries, and a lot more were just pulling them away from being able to think strategically and deliver value to their organizations. In that same report, 64% reported that growing compliance complexities were a massive issue leading to great risk exposure for the organization. And coupled with those two stats, nearly 90% of respondents reported that their job was increasingly stressful, leading to burnout for themselves and across the team. And that burnout can be attributed to the items you see listed uh, on our pressure cooker on the right. Centered around today's accountant are tighter deadlines, greater market volatility, ever-expanding compliance requirements, remote team members, and that means for, you know, for most of us, managing remote team members um, is a new, a new skill that we've had to pick up on. When COVID brought along this remote work environment, a lot of us were used to being in, to, in the office every day. I know I was. And so learning how to manage remote team members for the first time ever in their careers uh, certainly could pose a bit of pressure. And lastly, dynamic business models have been ever-changing to meet the pace of today's market. So it's really no shock when you lay it out that there's this need to shift our accounting philosophy from number crunching to a more tactical operational approach. And the good news is we've already been forced to really evolve this way. So we're already seeing this start to take place. And, and let's look at how that shift has been happening. Again, I mentioned we've already been forced to evolve there. This growing pressure means that we've got to do something to continue this better way forward. And if the anecdote of that expanding CFO role wasn't enough, let's really look at how this role is moving to evolve. We used to live in a balancing act between speed and accuracy. To pursue one, you had to give up another. But with the rise of operational accounting and moving towards automation, we can evolve from more tactical to more strategic tasks. What was originally looked at as the tactical uh, task of risk documentation, we can now evolve into a more active way of thinking to drive process efficiencies. So I challenge you to look at your current risk documentation and how it's serving your organization and drive it to be more strategically serving. How can your documentation be viewed as a way to drive process efficiencies? And this is a big mind shift from documenting it to maybe just kind of please the need or please shareholders and auditors to now documenting the processes to better operationally serve your team and open the door for a feedback loop to continue to get better over time. We're also moving past the old days of having siloed financial data and number crunching to now using that data to define the truth. Day in and day out, your teams are working with financial data that's, a, that's stored across your ERP and GL, 
other systems that you may be using for tax, for AP, for the close, but how often are you utilizing that data to define the truth in your financial position? So again, just shifting that mindset to be more operational and strategic will allow you to be more actionable with the financial data that you have. Now, many of you are probably already making this adjustment, but we've moved past performing ad hoc analysis to actually interpreting the results and making better business decisions with these insights. This will give you actionable insights to be able to take to the business and make the right decisions to propel forward. And what I love about this shift in behavior specifically is that it gives the accountant the power to own the data and really make a difference with the data that they're hands on with every day. Similarly to moving away from an ad hoc analysis, we can no longer simply create reports and just hand them off. We're now responsible for crafting the story of what occurred and driving the future narrative of performance. So in the past, we used to be able we, to close the books, we move forward. You close out your uh, July books and you can move on into August and just keep trudging forward as normal, but that doesn't really cut it anymore. From your monthly, quarterly, and annual reporting, think about what story you can start to craft to shine a light on your business operations, both past, present, and even looking towards the future of how that can shift and change with your teams. This is a huge opportunity to be a part of crafting that narrative and taking that reporting that you're already doing and adding context around it, adding a rally around it. And I've mentioned this time and time again today, but with the growing pressure that we face, we simply cannot allow ourselves to be shackled by manual processes. We are tasked with driving efficient automation to leverage technology and to get us out of the everyday weeds. So the key takeaway on this slide that I'd really implore you all to, to walk away with is that these tactical tasks that we're accustomed to just cannot stand the test of time as we move upward in this market. It is the accountant's charter to manage risk and drive process improvement through the organization. Shifting your mindset and evolving to a more active operational role will elevate you as an accountant to really win the accounting game. And I'd like to take a pause right here. I believe we have one polling question um, that we'd like to bring up. Sophia, if you could launch that for me, that would be fantastic. All right, perfect. So you should see the polling question on your screen. Um, if your accounting and finance operations were more automated, freeing you from manual work, how would you prefer to spend your work time now? Would that be analyzing financial data so that you can recommend ways to help your company run more effectively, conducting risk analysis evaluations to improve controls and compliance, finding ways to reduce time and uh, resources spent on the audit, or maybe just some other pro uh, projects that you have going on. So just take a few seconds, um, drop in your vote there. That will really help me kind of cater more of our presentation as we move along. All right. Thank you, everyone, for taking a few moments to answer that. Looks like uh, quite a few of you would be interested in analyzing that financial data so that you can recommend ways um, to really help with the organization. So love to hear that. That definitely falls in line with what we're talking about today. So let's just continue to keep moving along and, and talking about how we can do that. Now, I mentioned um, a few slides back about some stats that have come out that are really affecting our accounting profession. And I want to revisit these numbers and talk about just the accounting profession as a whole. At a broad scale, we are facing a number of challenges. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, an AICPA trends report that was issued by Accounting Today reported that 75% of AICPA members were eligible for retirement in 2020. What that means to me, there's a massive percentage of our current accounting workforce that's soon to be leaving. 
And after years of dedicated service to the profession, it's certainly their time to move on, enjoy retirement, but we got to find a way to fill in that gap. Now, unfortunately, what's a little startling with that is that there has been a 5% decline in the total number of accounting graduates. So you have an overwhelming majority of active AICPA members that are reaching retirement. We've got a decline in the total number of people who are interested in replacing those retiring members. And beyond that, there's been a 30% decline in the hiring of new accounting graduates over the last four years. And I would add this report was completed in a pre-COVID environment. Markets gotten increasingly more volatile since then. Burnout's a lot higher. So we've also seen that 40% of accountants are considering taking another job in the next year. And I mentioned these not to startle, not to frighten, but more just to bring about awareness of a profession that really is under duress. With this decline in total number of graduates, it's obvious that there are less and less young people pursuing and majoring in accounting. And frankly, the job can be difficult. It can be long hours. It's taking time away from families or just from other activities. And so a lot of people are looking to leave. But what I would like to, to, uh, to focus on is we have an opportunity now as individuals sitting in the profession to shift away from being just the numbers people, just the number crunchers that are sitting behind screens all day, um, we can move away from that. And I hope that throughout this presentation, you kind of picked up on the importance of shifting this reality. And this duress considered, I'd like to share a quote from one of Flowcast customers uh, about their experience as it relates to their close process. This quote comes from Thoy Vo, the controller at Alaska Industrial Hardware. He says, I was doing all of this in Excel, missing dinner, missing bedtime. It's not something people talk about, but it can make you cry at your desk. Ever since we started using Flowcast, that has gone away and our quality of life has improved. It really highlighted the positive impact that an accounting software can have, not just for companies, but for families. And I share this quote with a heavy heart because I know that there are participants on this call who live the same reality, whether it's related to the close or if it's related to the audit, SOX, FP&A processes, whatever it may be, if there's something that is affecting you day to day, making it harder for you to log off at five or harder to go back and not miss uh, dinner with your family, this is why we want to talk about the rise of operational accounting. It's more than just realigning to this operational mindset because there's also an emotional cost to the work that we've been doing. So let's minimize the emotional burden. Let's move towards a positive impact for you, your organization, and maybe even your family. So now we're halfway through. I think we're all on the same page. We need to operationalize. We need to help move the profession of accounting forward, really put in some positive uh, changes here. So that's great. We got that. But how do we execute? So we want to take a fresh look at how we do business moving forward. So let's look at that. The word operational is a massive buzzword across the industry. So why is it so important that accountants and accounting as a whole are the ones picked to drive the change? Well, as Warren Buffett has said, accounting is the language of business. And when you really think about it, that's the truth. The easiest way to tell the health of a business is by looking at their financial statements. Accounting shows you what has happened historically to a business. It can help you gauge how to predict for the future. And the language of accounting is universal. While some countries account for items differently, financial statements mean relatively the same thing anywhere in the world. So even when you might not be able to communicate linguistically, you have accounting to actually fall back on. And that's such a huge thing to think about. Um, so again, highlighting accounting really is the language of business. So if that's true, and businesses have an easier time communicating one-to-one -one when speaking in the language of accounting, then clearly the playbook for a business should be written by someone who speaks the language of business. And a quick shout out, this is our founder and CEO, Mike Whitmire. Though he is now an active or inactive CPA, he spent his career as an auditor in EY, 
spent some time with an organization on their journey to IPO as a senior accountant before founding Flowcast. And he may be, be he may be a little biased, but he's definitely spot on that the playbook for an for a business should be written in the language of accounting. If that's how we look to judge the the health of a company, it's that the accounting is how we look to uh, evaluate an organization, then we really need to start thinking about how the playbook for the business is tying back into that. So what does it take to hone in on operational excellence? Well, there are five key criteria that are really gonna help you knock this out of the park. First, see with new eyes. To do this, monitor progress see bottlenecks, validate completion of task over time. This will enable you to always know the answer to when and why with regards to your financial data. And most importantly, it lets you know where you might be exposed so you can work on addressing that. The goal to quote seeing with new eyes is creating complete transparency for the organization. Second, centralize your documentation so that you can act with confidence. This can lead to reduced audit risk, allows you to organize all evidentiary documentation in one place, helps eliminate fragmented data silos and automatically preserves the story behind the numbers. So if you can centralize all of that documentation together, now you know confidently where your audit support is, you can support all of your numbers and tying those out, so centralizing all of that data together is one key way to help achieve accounting operational excellence. Third is automation. So automating the mundane, helping to lead you to elevate your overall performance. And when it comes to automation, that is another word that gets thrown around a lot. I've certainly used it a lot today. But if you're thinking about what to automate, I would recommend focusing on the recurring tasks that constantly come across your desk. The things that you, every time it drops in front of you, you think there's got to be a better way to do this. It's taking too much time. There's got to be a better way forward. And now one thing with Flowcast, we can help integrate your Excel, ERP, and cloud storage to help you automate those mundane tasks. And we'll look at that a little later when we jump into some, uh, some product slides. But Focus on automation assisted work, which will allow the software to help do the grunt work for you. Again, just putting you in a position to achieve that operational excellence and be more strategic serving to the organization. Fourth, work better together. Especially on a hyper di uh, dispersed team, speed collaboration is going to take you pretty far. And I'm not sure there may be some of you now who are still in a fully remote environment. Some of you may be going back into the office, but it's certainly a little difficult to build and maintain a happier team when you're all dispersed. But keeping everyone on the same page, relieving burnout and eliminating mind numbing ta status meetings will build and maintain a happier team for you. Fifth, run at a faster pace. So we're all feeling the pressure of reporting requirements and meeting these tight deadlines. But when you work to achieve this operational excellence, you can run in a continuous cycle. Investing in automation to eliminate lag time and increase visibility will lead you to be more predict, uh, to have more predictable outcome. So you don't have to stress over missing those deadlines. You know that you can hit those tight deadlines at a faster pace. You can ensure uh, accuracy as you're doing that. So again, those are five key criteria for accounting operational excellence. And over uh, the last half of this presentation, I'll talk about some ways we can do that, how to build the playbook, and how Flowcast can help you with that as well. So let's put on our operational ha hats. How do we do it? We talked about what all of these five great criteria are, um, but how do we do it? So First, to set the stage, you need a team. You've got to have a team of people. Taking it back to my football analogy earlier, get the players and the coaches on board for operationalizing accounting. And now comes the real fun. This is where we can actually put it into play. Starting with our green arrow, step one is documenting. This is where you can create your playbook in the language of business accounting. Document all of your processes, your policies and your procedures around each workflow within the business. 
Now, some of you, most of you probably already have some of this documented uh, in checklists or other uh, living in other areas, but I encourage you to take the time as you're performing these tasks and these different uh, procedures over the next month or so, just be prescriptive. Write down exactly what you're doing, document what this looks like. A couple examples of documentation could be walkthroughs on how to use your systems, creating a checklist for your period close, or just documenting your internal controls and ensuring that you're following those controls um, and looking for ways to improve them as well. Second, it's time to automate. We have our playbook, now it's time to implement and deploy it. This is an area where Flowcast can really come in to assist. With Flowcast, you can assign work and track completion, and we actually manage um, the workflows and roll forward all of the recurring tasks automatically for you. So it helps with that automation piece a bit. Third, track and manage to win the game. Again, here, Flowcast can help track progress to ensure completion. Uh, we automatically remind people if they're falling behind schedule, allowing you to keep the team on track. But even without a tool, you got to think of ways to track and manage um, the playbook that you've created and ensuring that your team is deploying and acting on this uh, intentionally so that you can manage uh, and continue to look for ways to improve. Fourth, analyze and optimize your operations to win the championship. Do not look at this as the final step. I know technically on our wheel here, it's number four, it is the last, but this is an ever evolving continuous cycle built to increase your accounting operations. When it comes to analyzing, you can drive efficiencies with Flowcast using our analytics to identify bottlenecks, um, and you can make continuous improvements around the least efficient portions of the business to optimize all operations. And again, these improvements can come in the form of technology, maybe it's process change, of course, talent management, and many other areas. And while Flowcast as a solution may not necessarily solve the root of these problems, we can help identify the problems and help users prioritize the projects. But again, before I move on, I strongly encourage you, do not look at this as a four-step cycle and then you're complete. This is an ongoing feedback loop. Again, going back to my sports football analogy, what happens when a football team wins the Super Bowl? They go right back to revisiting their playbooks, crafting new plays, new routes, refining old ones, and they continue to do this so that they can go and have a successful season, push for a Super Bowl the next year. And it never stops evolving, just as your accounting operations should. And one area that often takes the hit for being a bottleneck in your accounting operations is the close. The financial close sits in the middle of the record to report process. It's a key connection point for all applications. You can see on the left and right side of the screen, there are a lot of different activities that occur upstream. There's just as many that occur downstream. And at any given time, your close is either waiting for an upstream application or team member, um, to provide data and information so that you're able to actually close the books. And on the flip side of that, there are downstream activities that are in limbo waiting on the books to be closed so that you can now move into planning, budgeting, uh, analytics, reporting. So the close really has become a bottleneck for some organizations. And thinking of ways to automate that and move away from this bottleneck will really help you increase the efficiencies of your operations. And before we move into uh, the final piece of this presentation where we'll take a look at the Flowcast product, um, I'd like to pause for our second polling question. This is our last one. Um, if you could please just take a moment to, uh, to select the answer that most applies to you and then we can move forward for the rest. So how quickly today is your organization able to close the books? Is that less than 10 days, 10 to 20 days, or maybe even over 20 in some cases? Thank you. 
All right. Thank you, everyone, for taking a moment to uh, fill that out. Looks like everyone said less than 10 days, and that is incredible. I'm so glad to hear that. Hopefully, the close is not serving as a bottleneck to your organization, and you're able to move uh, through to close the books quicker. So let's hop into how Flowcast automates to achieve operational excellence. I mentioned it earlier, our genesis is really around the close. So let's start there. You can increase the financial velocity and accuracy uh, at, in your organization with Flowcast Close Management. What's typically a manual, error-prone, time-consuming process made for long hours and late nights can be turned around as we provide a single place for you to manage the close with features such as percent complete, progress by function, and progress date. You can reduce the number of status meetings you're in, manage by exception to identify bottlenecks, and reduce the need for status checks and balance the workload across your team. Taking it a step further, with Flowcast, you can ensure that you are always audit ready. With customized folders and checklists, Flowcast mimics where you already worked. So we're not asking for an uproot in the name of finance transformation. We want to live and work the way that you work today. And we'll carry over this structure to drive consistency each month. By offering a direct inter integration to your ERP and your cloud storage provider, you can view all of your supporting documentation in one single place without ever leaving the screen. And speaking of that one centralized place, you can capture your close processes here for standardization across the team and to ensure accountability as well. On the topic of analyzing and optimizing, impact your close efficiencies with Flowcast Analyze. This tool allows you to forecast the close with real-time KPIs and analytics. It gets insight into your accounting team's workload and maximizes efficiencies to improve future closes. So you're always thinking about ways to improve what's next. Identify those pesky perpetual bottlenecks to also reduce your time to close. And you can use the progress tracking there on the right to understand the time to close at any time. See where you're at and how long or how short <laughs> you are um, to achieving that close. Zooming out a bit from the close, I'd like to take just a few seconds to talk about Flowcast operations. This is the true workflow manager that extends the power of Flowcast close to connect and provide greater control over your other accounting operations, giving you an area to centrally manage critical processes like reporting, compliance, and planning so you can rely on your processes as your organization grows. This will serve as your centralized source of truth with notes allowing for feedback, annotation, and even, even attaching or linking the documented evidence for each review. And you can see an example uh, here on the right side, that's our dashboard. Um, you have two areas for the close for March and April in that screenshot, but you can also see there are some compliance activities being tracked, FP&A activities, and there's no shortage of accounting workflow that you can track in Flowcast. And I'll begin to close this out here. Flowcast brings order to the automation uh, silos across the record to report process. We unify upstream and downstream tasks under one approach to increase financial velocity and accuracy across your operations. And as I mentioned during our discussion about shifting out of the role of a tactical approach to a more strategic approach, one thing I mentioned is that time and time again, as accountants, we're faced with choosing between speed or accuracy. But with Flowcast, we're able to help you both increase your speed and increase your accuracy. With a 26% reduction time to close the books monthly, coupled with a 39% increase in the accuracy of the closed data you receive, you can rest easier with Flowcast knowing that you're getting real-time financial results quicker and accurately each month. And similar on the audit side, with Flowcast, our users experienced a 26% reduction in the time required for the audit process, while also reducing the discrepancies that are found by auditors by 
So it really is kind of a win-win situation here where we're helping you drive to be quicker, more accurate when you're moving to your reported financials. And with that, I know we have about, looks like six or seven minutes left. So we've got some time for some Q&A. Uh, if there are any questions from the audience, I don't think we had any come in yet, but now that we have some time, I'd love to open that up to everyone. Yes, thank you, Casey. So, yep, we're gonna open up the floor for some questions. And I actually do have some here for you. Um, so I'll start with this one. Uh, does Flowcast integrate with my ERP? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So we do integrate with the ERP. Uh, we integrate with uh, Sage products um, as well as NetSuite and Microsoft. And uh, the way we integrate with the ERP is we're pulling the data in real time and refreshing as you make entries, as you're adjusting your books, so that as soon as you make a change in Flowcast, or I'm sorry, as soon as you see a change or make a change in your ERP, you'll see that reflected in Flowcast. So as you're walking through and working on reconciliations or your closed processes, you can see those numbers tie out in real time. Great, thank you. And I do have another one here. How does Flowcast actually help speed up my close? Also a fantastic question. Um, the main way that Flowcast helps speed up your close is we're, um, we're automating and centralizing your checklist and all the processes and steps that you have to take each month to close the books. So if you know that you have 10 steps that need to be taken um, to close out your AR accounts for the month, you can list all of those in Flowcast. Those will be rolled over each month. You can assign those tasks to certain team members. You can also assign uh, required checkoffs. So once that task is completed, another member can go in and validate. So you're ensuring that, yes, it's closed and it's accurate. So that helps increase the efficiency around the time it's taking rather than just living in Excel spreadsheets and going from one system to the next. We really bring it all together in this one central area uh, to centralize and automate for you each month. Awesome. And I know you mentioned this in the first question, but I'll just ask again so we can reiterate. What ERPs does Flowcast integrate with? So we integrate um, really with any ERP. Now we are a Sage Intact uh, marketplace provider. So we do have a direct API integration with Sage Intact as well uh, as with NetSuite and coming soon, uh, some Microsoft integrations. Um, but we are a flexible solution and we work with hundreds of ERPs, some that I've really only heard of once. So as long as we can, or, or rather as long as your ERP can produce a trial balance, Flowcast can integrate with that and refresh the data uh, in a timely manner. Great. So I don't see any more questions right now. Um, I'll just pause for a few seconds to see if we have any last minute questions. Okay, and I'm not seeing any. So with that, I just wanna thank everybody uh, for attending today's webinar. Uh, we'll be sending out an email um, with slides. Oh, and Casey, do you have anything else to say? Yeah, just one more uh, quick thing here. If you're interested in learning more about Flowcast uh, and you'd like to see a product demonstration, we'll take 60 minutes to dive into your process today and how you're working in the close. And then we'll evaluate, you know, is it a good fit? Could it be something that would benefit your organization? If you're interested in doing that, um, please reach out to your RKL account manager to schedule a demonstration um, for from now until the end of September, we'll actually be offering a $50 DoorDash gift card um, to you for, for setting up that product demonstration. So, you, you know, spend some time with us today, but you can enjoy lunch on Flowcast after that. So if you are interested in learning more, again, please just reach out to your RKL account manager and we can get that set up. Um, or if you have any questions or just want to shoot me an email directly, here's my email and that will wrap it up for me officially. So thank you, Sophia, for letting me throw that in there really quickly. Yeah, no problem. Yep. So we'll be sending out the slides and replay video in the next couple of days, like I said. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, to your RKL representative or Casey. And um, we hope to see you at our next event. Thank you.